What's good, everybody? Um, sitting in traffic today, and <laughs> I had such a spirited response to week one Cowboys loss that I, I wanted to share some thoughts about week two. Um, and and as right as as everything or not everything, but so many things that I had a problem with in week one seem to have solved themselves in week two, which is incredible. Um, and as much as I knocked Jerry Jones in week one, I feel like you have to come back around and give him a little bit of credit in week two. Um, but there's a few things about that win that I thought were really cool. Um, so I'm going to go through them as, as quickly as I can. And number one, was Noah Brown. Um, bit of a breakout game for Noah Brown, and I may have statistics wrong. I'm talking off the top of my head. I didn't prepare for this at all. Noah Brown, five catches, I believe, 91 yards, a couple really good catches, um, a big catch on the game-winning drive. Um, Noah Brown played his ass off, and it was cool to me because – a lot of people are saying they didn't see this in Noah Brown. Like, this surprises them. And I, Noah Brown is one that I have been in his corner. Um, I've liked what I've seen from Noah Brown and when he's gotten in for spot duty. And the great thing about Noah Brown, and I made this argument uh, in a thread when we, when we re-signed him. We re-signed Noah Brown, and somebody said, big deal, you know, who cares? We're re-signing a fifth stringer. And maybe that's true, but Noah Brown does it all. And he's and he's and from what I hear, he's an ultimate professional. Um the guy plays special teams. He comes in and blocks. Um he he's he you know, every player that makes the team can't be a superstar, and you need glue guys. And Noah Brown is one of those glue guys. And given the opportunity to step up, he stepped up in a big way uh, this past Sunday. Um, number two, uh, I mean, it goes without saying Cooper Rush. Um, you know, it's interesting because, and I said this in my last video, Dallas ran the ball 27 times. And they need to run the ball more, in my opinion. I do understand that running... Running the football is predicated by getting first downs. So if you're not getting first downs, it's hard to continually run the ball. But they ran the ball more Sunday. I think it's unfortunate that it took Cooper Rush for them to start running the ball and allowing your quarterback to be, I don't want to call him a game manager a la Trent Dilfer, but allowing Cooper Rush to steer the offense Rather than when we have Dak, you know, throwing 40, 45 times, you know, trying to be the offense. And I think that's a formula that, you know, with running the football, uh, passing, mixing in the pass game, uh, and playing good defense. That's a formula for success. And I think, I get it, the NFL has changed. You know, the way, the way that, that most teams play is – not running the football anymore, but the way the Dallas Cowboys 2022 are built, run the ball, throw off the run, and play defense. Um, I think they ran it 27 times and they threw it 31 times. But Cooper Rush was, you know, obviously more than capable. He made some big throws. Um, he moved around well. Uh, I thought he did a nice job. So, number three, um, obviously the entire defense played good, right? Uh, the entire defense played good. Micah Parsons is obviously uh, a stud, but I feel like we've kind of come to expect this. Uh, I want to talk about two guys on the defense that, uh, again, these guys stepping in. So, one, Dante Fowler. Dante Fowler Jr., he had a sack. Uh, he batted down a ball. Um, he had a, a couple, like, high-effort 
you know, uh, explosive defensive plays, like impact splash plays. Um, and basically, he, him among others, well, hell, I just remembered, Dante Fowler and Dorrance Armstrong. Dorrance Armstrong had two sacks also. So <clears throat> these are your guys that are playing instead of Randy Gregory. And remember all the the woes when Randy Gregory uh, left. You know, everybody was upset. Um, I mentioned it. I said, man, uh, Dorrance Armstrong had the same stats as Randy Gregory. What are we worried about? You know, other than we lost a rotational piece. Well, <clears throat> you get that rotational piece, Dante Fowler, in the mix. Dante Fowler had a huge impact Sunday. And like I say, obviously, as did Dorrance Armstrong. Uh, Dorrance Armstrong is an, is an athletic beast. Um, the dude's good. So I, I don't have any worries with Armstrong holding down uh, right defensive end and Dante Fowler being that rotational piece. Another player on the defense that stepped up uh, when he needed to, so Jaron Curse was out. Um, really good to see Donovan Wilson play so good. Um, Donovan Wilson kind of became the odd man out last year with all of our pieces at safety. Uh, he was hurt. He was dinged a lot of the year. Uh, I thought Donovan Wilson was a tackling nightmare for the Bengals. Uh, everywhere you looked, Donovan Wilson was cleaning up. Um, did a great job playing in the box. Um, played a little bit of coverage. Um, again, thought he thought he did a fantastic job. Um, Trayvon Diggs. Uh, everybody knows that <laughs> uh, Jamar Chase. He didn't necessarily call out Trayvon Diggs, but he definitely had something to say about Diggs, uh, his ability. And I'm not going to say that Diggs shut down Jamar Chase. But uh, Diggs played a solid, solid game. Uh, Chase did not go off on the Cowboys secondary, be it be it Diggs or Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown did a nice job too. Be it Diggs or Anthony Brown that was covering him. <clears throat> um, I think he got off for two catches and 14 yards on Diggs. And of course, Diggs had a huge, uh, um, not, I'm not going to call it game ending, but huge tackle late in the game to get us the ball back um, and get us in position for that game winning drive. So, you know, a guy that is talked about by the media as being overrated digs because he gives up too many yards. Um, he didn't. You know, Burrow threw for 199 yards. And I get it. People are going to say, well, that pass rush was in his face all day. Part of the reason. You can pass rush like that. Part of the reason you can bring extra guys um, is, you know, your defensive backs. And, and, and obviously part of the reason the defensive backs have success is your pass rush. But they play off of each other. And uh, I was I was super impressed. Um, I'm going to throw Leighton Van Der Esch in there too. Thought he had a good game. Got himself a sack. Uh, another guy that we kept around on the cheap. You know, uh, I think they re-signed Van Der Esch for a couple million. You know, in a in a prove it year, so be interesting to see what happens with him for the rest of the season. But he looks healthy and playing good. Um, it would be bad if I didn't mention Brett Maher. Um, holy cow! You know, it's another one where we made a change. You know, uh, Zerlon wasn't working last year. Um, Zerlon missed some critical field goals last year that. And in my mind, led to two losses last year, which those two losses, we we could have had a bye week and not even played that game against the 49ers last year. But uh, so they had kind of a kick caravan in the offseason, tried to cut a few different guys out, <clears throat> ended up bringing in Brett Maher, former Cowboy. And all he's done so far has been perfect on field goals. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe all of his field goals – have been over 50 yards, uh, including the game winner uh, Sunday. So, man, um, can't be anything but pleased with that. Um, Meyer coming in and just being absolute money. Um, what a what a what a, a good story! And uh, shout out to Dustin Bellinger. 
So I believe Maher is, <clears throat> I think Maher went to Dustin Bellinger's high school. I think that's what it was. I have to double check that. Um, last but not least, and not necessarily anyone in particular, is the offensive line. Uh, the much maligned offensive line. Uh, you know, got Tyler Smith at left tackle, who by all re reports is holding it down and doing a, and doing a good job. Um, you basically got a backup to a backup at left guard. Uh, Terrence still at right tackle, who I think got held three penalties, three or four penalties called on him in week one. They held it down. They gave up one sack. Um, they weren't perfect, but I thought they held it down. The Bengals are not, you know, terrible uh, defensive front. Um, what I will say, you know, and I think with a group like the group we have, um, I think anytime you can run the football, you are playing to their advantage, you know, giving them an opportunity to fire off the ball and, and block for the back. So uh, I think that plays, to their, plays into their hands too. So just kind of a, the whole game, all the results from that game were kind of like a, um, not a breakout, but just a, okay, these guys, these guys can do it. You know, these, these guys that we maligned and we questioned and we wondered, why are you going with this guy? Why are you settling with Cooper Rush? I never wanted to go sign a quarterback, by the way. Forget that. I don't want to go waste a draft pick on a quarterback. No. Um, but it, it, it really changes the outlook for this team in just one game, you know, going to one and one instead of going to zero and two, showing some things, you know, showing potentially a formula um, for winning because, you know, if you can implement that formula and win and beat the Bengals, uh, you should be able to win most of your games. And <clears throat> it's all they got to do with rush out there is keep themselves in contention. Um, you know, maybe it slows down having the speed Dak back. Um, you know, maybe Noah Brown emerging if Michael Gallup is not right 100% ready this week. Maybe we can give Michael Gallup another week. Um, maybe the same thing with Jason Peters since Tyler Smith seems to be holding it down at left tackle. Um, you know, maybe it gives us a little bit of breathing room. And then when all these guys do get in, your Michael Gallup's, uh, your Jason Peters, your Connor McGovern comes back. Um, you know, you've got all these other guys that have gotten experience as starters, and all of a sudden you've got impressive depth in areas where when the season started it didn't appear that you did have any depth. James Washington is going to come back at some point. Um, so I am calmly excited about what might happen next. Um, Monday night is obviously a big game. Every game feels like a must win now, but uh, I wouldn't call Monday night a must win, but <laughs> we need to win. Uh, at, at the Giants, um, hadn't heard a lot about Dalton Schultz yet. I don't know if he's gonna play. If he doesn't, um, I think it's another good opportunity for <clears throat> one of these young guys to step up and for whatever reason our drafted tight end his name is slipping my mind we've got Peyton Hendershot and I can't remember his name is slipping my mind I think he's more than capable um and 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 truly the fact that we're not panicking with Schultz, with Dalton Schultz potentially being out kind of proves why we don't need to be paying that guy 13 15 million dollars so that's just my thought. Um, and I and I, I really hate to say this, and I kind of have come around to it, but <clears throat> I, I think this is the end for Zeke. Uh, not because I think he's not good anymore or his production, but I just don't think he can pay a back $20 million. Um, when a guy like Tony Pollard comes in and produces just as much or better exactly what you need, it, I, I don't think you have to have 
a Derrick Henry, Ezekiel Elliott level back to succeed. You need to have, you know, multiple solid running backs. You don't have to pay him $20 million. Uh, I hate it. I'm going to miss him because I, I think he's gone after this year. Anyhow, long video, 15 minutes. Um, I'm super happy about the results Sunday. We will see what happens. Hopefully, I won't be making another rant video next week. I want to do better than doing these from my car with this low production value. You know, I want to uh, incorporate a lot more, but this is when I end up having time to do it, so this is what you get. And I know there's a few guys that watch and listen to my thoughts and comment, and we get, kind of go back and forth a little bit, and that's kind of who I do this for and for myself. I enjoy talking through it myself. So appreciate y'all watching. Keep it real. Have a great Thursday.